Good morning, everybody. Good morning to all my replay viewers. Welcome to The Scope. This is Morning Motivations, talking with Sister B. Get your daily motivations with Sister Barla Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Good morning. I apologize. We're getting started a little bit late. It is raining out here. My connection was a little bit off. Hey, Mrs. Wow, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to The Scope this morning. I'm sorry for the delay again. Um, we do have a storm out here, and for some reason, it was making my connection not work. So I would like to thank you guys again for joining The Scope. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody is doing well. Blessings. Blessings to everybody. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everyone's doing well. Hey, Bradshaw. Welcome. Welcome. Hope everybody's doing okay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for saying good morning to me. Let's go ahead and flip this thing around really quick. Hey, everybody. What's up? I'm inside today because it's raining outside and I ain't trying to get wet. Good morning, Sister Stout. How are you doing today? Hope that you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Blessed and saying the same to you. Awesome. Awesome. Good morning. Mr. Relentless in the house. Hey, everybody. Yes, yes. Good to have y'all on the scope today. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. We have a great scope today. We have some awesome content to talk about. Um, being content. Being content. What's up, bam? You know, Mr. Relentless. I was like, what is FLB? First Lady Barlow. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get this party started. We are going to talk about the power of contentment today. Contentment. Hey, y'all. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm excited this morning. I'm ready to get started. So again, for those of you that are new to my scope, my name is Candace Barlow. I am a pastor's wife. I am a mindset coach and I'm a biblical counselor. I'm with you guys Monday through Friday, dropping that mindset knowledge and dropping that biblical counseling as well. So let's go ahead and get it started. Hey, Sister Wheeler. Hey, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, so let's go ahead and get started, y'all. Thank you, Mr. Relentless, for inviting Beth. Beth, I'm glad to have you on my scope this morning, girl. Welcome, welcome. So we are talking about the power of contentment. Thank you. Thank you for the blessings. You're, we're talking about the power of contentment today, guys, the power of contentment. And I hope that this connection will be well for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. Okay, y'all. So as human beings in general, we, we, we have a tendency to not be content with what we have. Okay. Whether we say it out loud or not, whether we like to admit it or not, every once in a while, we're, we desire a little bit more. And desire is a never ending monster. Okay. It's a, a monster that continues to grow in our lives. Okay. So as soon as we have one need met, then we want some Something else to be met and we have something else that we desire okay we dream a dream of moving out of our apartment into a house and then we get into that house that beautiful two-bedroom house with that white picket fence and now we're like oh we kind of want a four-bedroom house and once we move into that four-bedroom house now we want to instead of a tub we want a jacuzzi okay and we want this and we want that and remember when we didn't have a car and we say god all I need is a bucket. All I need is a bucket to get from A to B. I don't care if it has anything inside of it. And then we get that bucket and I'm like, you know, God, we kind of want a car that has an air conditioner. And now I want rims and now I want a souped up speaker system. And I want this and I that. And you know, if we are not careful, it will go on and on. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having good things in life. Okay. I'm not saying that because we all get, we want good things in life. You know, we want to have nice things in life. The point I'm making is it's easy to fall into a cycle of wanting, wanting, and never being satisfied if we're not careful to learn how to be content with what we actually have in our lives. Amen? Amen. Some of us get caught up in life circumstances, where we live, what we're driving, your AC isn't working. <laughs> hey, but you're content with that, okay? You're content, be content, you know, roll down the windows, girl. So, and if we're not careful, we'll get critical and we will get judgmental and we'll be trying to keep up with the Joneses at all time. Forget about the Joneses and be content with what you have right now. So let's look at the Bible really quick. Philippians 4.11 says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever circumstances I have. Where we live, the standard what we live by, what we live by, we need to be content. I don't care where we're at. We've got to be content. Thank you guys so much for inviting followers. And thank you for following. I appreciate that. 
Life has cycles. Life has cycles that we live in. Sometimes we're at the top of the mountain and sometimes we're in the valley, okay? We're at the top, we're at the bottom. Sometimes our finances are booming and banging and we feel like we're we're rolling and other times we're just barely making it, okay? But we've got to learn to be content. I'm so glad that you need this. God knows what we need. Um, and, and we've got to learn to be content no matter where we are at in life because we're always going to have a roller coaster of different things in different areas in our lives that we're at but we've got to be content in it come on now build character yes it does not thinking about what car you drive or where you're living but the bible talks about being able to trust god with the little things can you trust god with the hoopy hoopty that you're driving can you trust him with your busted up car that you're driving can you trust him with that little apartment that you live in right now because if you can trust god if god could trust you with the little things he's gonna blow you up and expand you to the bigger and better things but can he trust you where you're at right now can he trust you with a little bit yes 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 can he trust you with it right now come on somebody he's got to be able to trust you with those little things and then he's going to elevate you he's going to elevate you to that next step but you've got to learn to be content where you are right now forget about the joneses y'all okay say the joneses got to keep up with me because they got to know that when they don't have it they got to be content now they're looking to you to learn how to be content let's further explore this y'all Philippians 4 19 says and my God somebody point to yourself and say my God we've got to make this thing personal somebody say and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus the Bible says in this scripture that he's going to meet all your needs all of them but now get this get this sometimes we think okay but what about when this as your needs grow as your situation grows as the things that you need get bigger God's going to supply accordingly can I get a witness the blessings will get bigger. Bigger, excuse me, <laughs> you threw me off. I'm glad that you love this. The blessings will get bigger. The increase will get bigger, bigger as your needs begin to grow. So if you belong to Christ, like the Apostle Paul, you can learn the secret of contentment. Amen. Paul wrote in the Word of God, godliness with contentment is great gain. It is great gain y'all it is great gain let me tell you what you're gonna gain you're gonna gain more peace when you're content you're gonna gain more sanity when you're content you're gonna gain a life full of less stress when you're content Paul had to learn to be content in the secret of contentment in his life and we have got to learn the same thing and it begins with trusting God we trust God when blessings are flowing and we trust him when coins are flowing. We trust him with our increase, but can we trust him with a little bit? Can we trust him when we're not getting everything that we feel like we should have? Can we trust him in our lack when we feel like we don't have everything all together? Can we trust him with that? Amen. Amen. Can we trust God? Can we trust him? So I want to talk about three ways that we can learn to live a more contented life. Okay. A life that is more contented. All right. So let's see. Number one, y'all. Number one. Somebody type in number one. So I know you guys are here with me. Thank you for those hearts. Those beige hearts those blue hearts those yellow hearts thank you guys i appreciate that thank you it keeps me going y'all number one number one number one we need to learn to give thanks in all things we've got to learn to give thanks in all things paul had to learn to give thanks in every single circumstance that he went through every experience that he went through and we all need to be able to mirror him and to be able to give thanks because thankfulness is a matter of obedience okay what does the bible have to say about that let's look at the bible first thessalonians first thessalonians 5 and 15 says in everything in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you not concerning everybody else out there concerning you concerning me it says in everything give thanks so many times we're searching for the will of God in our lives thinking this is the heavens are going to open up and say thus is the will of God for your life you're going to walk over here but the will of God for your life is to be thankful for where you are at right now your current circumstance your current situation thankful for where everything 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 so many times we're searching for that will but the 
will is to be thankful. We can't only be thankful when we're healed in our bodies and when we can't only be thankful when we get that financial breakthrough and when our business takes off and begins to soar. Those aren't the only times we need to be thankful. We need to be thankful in those in-between stages as well. Thankful if we're the in-between stages as well. The Bible says in Psalms 107, 1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. So when we have to be thankful for if God doesn't do anything else, y'all, he is good. He is good. And his love endures forever. And if he can love me, if he can love me before I was even saved, and that love endures forever, I have a reason to be thankful. I have a reason to be thankful. Okay, number two. Number two, y'all. Number two. Type in number two for me. Type in number two. Live above your current circumstances. Live above your current circumstances. And let me teach you how to do that. You might be in a position in your life that is not ideal, but we've got to be the best of it, knowing that God has it under control. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're facing, we have to know that we know that we know that God has it under control. We have to be able to live above that. So let's look at the Bible. Second Corinthians 12 and 9 through 10 says, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and needs and persecution and pleasure and distresses for Christ's sake. When I am weak, then I am strong. Paul didn't take pleasure in the pain itself because that's just foolishness. Okay. But what he did, he took pleasure in the power of Christ that manifested through him in times of infirmities, in times of persecution, in time of distress. So we also need to be able to do that in our lives. We need to take pleasure in the power of Christ that is imputed upon our lives, y'all. So when we're going through the fire, God will show up and show himself strong. Have y'all ever been in a situation where it just was, it just knocked you off your feet in a situation when you were like, I, I just don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to take care of this, but somehow you were carried through it. That boom right there is the power of God carrying you through your situations. And the my Bible says in my weakness, in my weakness, he is made strong. So I, I, I take pleasure in that, that the power of God can resonate on my life when I am weak. If this, <laughs> bam, bam, yeah, that's right, that's right. So we need to learn to lean on God's power and not our own fleshly, humanly power that we have down here, okay? We got to depend on him. The Bible says in Hebrews 3 and 5, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things. And Jesus said, he will never leave us or forsake us. So when you start thinking, man, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. Remember what the word of God says, that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And that strength comes in our weakness because he is made strong. That's how we can do it, y'all. We've got to rely on the word of God, okay? Rely on the promises of God to carry you through, amen? Amen. Number three. Number three. Hey, brown lady. Hey, welcome to the scope. Number three. I, I'm so big on this one. Be a blessing to others. Be a blessing to others. Can't say can't. That's right. I live by this principle. Period. I live by this. My life is to be a blessing to others as much as I can. So let's look at the word of God so I can back this thing up. Somebody say back that thing up. Well, not like that, but you know what I'm saying. Hebrews 13, 16 says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not for such with sacrifices. God is well pleased. The Bible says, but to do good and to, and communicate and forget not. It says to do good. It says to do good. Come on, somebody. And so many times we're just worried about ourselves, but we got to do good to other people. And I need this to resonate with you, okay? You will be blessed as you bless others. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Back that up. Okay, so you will be blessed as you bless others. It will motivate you. It will push you. It will make you want to do more as you see the smiles and as you're blessing other people. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 3, and 4, 
Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only on the, to others for his own interest, but to the interest of others. So what am I saying? What am I saying? What am I saying? Don't do anything out of vain deceit. Okay, conceit. We're not supposed to be conceited. We're not supposed to be self-righteous. It's not just all about us, but it's about others. A self-centered person, I'm going to tell you right now, don't got it all together, okay? We're insecure or they're insecure. They don't have it all together. And furthermore, they're missing out on an abundant life when you're self-centered, okay? But the heart and the life of a generous person is a person who lives for the interests and benefits of others. Can I get an amen on Periscope today? Like the joy that you see on your husband's face when you say like, you know, baby, let's watch some football highlights together. Or let's watch that game together. You know what I mean? Because they're not expecting us to do that thing. So when I can go to my husband and say, man, let's watch them. We, we like Chicago. Let's watch the Bulls highlights together, honey. Let's watch that. He lights up and he likes that. And I love to make him happy in the same way with the husbands out there. When you say, you know what, baby? I'm going to clean the house with you today. Or, you know what, baby? I'm going to take you shopping. And ladies, I better see a whole bunch more hearts for that shopping part right there. Bam. I put a little plug in for y'all, okay? But the point I'm trying to make is you want to be able to take interest in what other people like to do versus not only what you want to do, okay? I talked about this before. I always make a point. I always make a point to be involved in my neighbor's lives. I bake cookies for them. I go to their house. I see if they need anything. I talk to them. I want to know their likes. I know I, I look at their pictures of their grandchildren. I want to be involved in their lives as much as possible. I make a point to pour into other people so that they can see the growth and success and increase that they want to see inside of their lives. I make a point to do so because I want to pour and bless the lives of other people. Amen. Man. So as you begin to do these things and as you begin to mentor people and as you begin to bless people and as you begin to love people and show the love of Jesus, thank you for saying that and show that love, you will just, you will go like this. You will go like this. You will see blessings and you will feel things and do that. You will be, you will be motivated to push to do and more than you've ever done before. And you will be content. You will be content because as you begin, yes, as you begin to let your light shine and let your light shine on others, those areas of your life that you're not content with seem to seem to move further and further away because we got to remember it's not about us. It is not about us it is about the kingdom of God because you know what this world here this earth is not our home y'all and I know that we tend to think that sometimes and we, we get caught up in it but this here this is not our home okay we're merely passing through so learn to be content right here as you're passing through be a blessing do what you gotta do to make it into heaven okay it yes it's not about us it's about Jesus it is about Jesus it's all about him. It's all about him. So I thank you guys for being on the scope with me this morning. Um, God is so good. God is so good. So before I get off here, I'm going to hit my points without elaborating, but I will reintroduce myself for those of you who are new. If you're new to my scope, I want you to either swipe up or swipe to the side. Click on my name and follow me because my name is Candace Barlow. I'm here with you guys Monday through Friday. I am a mindset coach. I am a pastor's wife and I am dropping mindset knowledge. I'm dropping biblical counseling and whatever else the Lord puts on my heart to share with you. I want to be a blessing to y'all. Okay. So I hope that you can follow me i thank you for banging out them hearts y'all yes that shows me that you find value in this content okay so again my name is candace barlow i'm a pastor's wife i pastor alongside with my husband reverend rodney m barlow and we are in independence missouri thank you beth i appreciate that yes girl i appreciate it i'm with y'all monday through friday 7 30 a.m central standard time so today we talked about the power of contentment okay and the points to get more content Number one, number one, let's get down to this. Number one was to be thankful in everything. We need to learn how to be more thankful. God, give God thanks in everything. Number two, live above your current circumstances. And number three, number three was be a blessing to others. Okay. So if you just jumped on, I hope that you grab the replay. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here so I can get my son off to school and fed and everything. But I love and I appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys on Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. Thank you, God. for God, Thank you guys for the hearts. 
walk in the joy and the peace and the blessings of the Lord today. God bless you all, and I'll see you guys soon. God bless. Thank you. Yes, you have a blessed weekend. Y'all catch church on Sunday. Catch some church on Sunday. Get your blessing on, okay, y'all? <laughs> all right, have a blessed day as well. God bless you guys. I'll see you later.